So let's do an example of this. Let's imagine um, that we had some ice and we can plot the temperature of the ice against time. And we started with ice, I don't know, say minus 20 degrees centigrade, and we put a fire under it. So what happens is the temperature will rise until it gets to zero degrees centigrade. At that point, even though there's still a fire underneath it, the temperature will not rise. Instead, it will steadily turn from 100% ice to 100% water. And that'll take a while. So to begin with, there'll be mostly ice, a little bit of water that's melted, and as time goes on, more and more water melts. So eventually, by here, all the ice has turned to water, and then the temperature will start rising again. And it will rise until we get to 100 degrees, at that point, the temperature will stop rising. So now what's going to happen is here you're going to start off with 100% water and 0% steam. And as it goes along here, more and more of the water will turn into steam until eventually it will be 100% steam and then the temperature can keep on rising as you make the steam hotter and hotter. And this is what happens to any substance, not just water. Now, the energy here it's the latent heat of fusion, the energy needed to turn something from a solid to a liquid, is actually quite large. It's 334 kilojoules, that's 334,000 joules per kilogram. But the energy up here, the latent heat of vaporization to turn a liquid into a gas is even more immense. It's actually 2,265 kilojoules. So 2,265,000 joules per kilogram. So these are very large numbers indeed.